Hello YouTube, this is the Super Dave. Uh, keeping up with a little bit of variety I'm trying to add to the channel. Uh, we're going to unbox and look at the Kits Concept, uh, Macross, Saga, and or Robotech uh, Rick Hunter figure. Um, I haven't seen too many of these videos out there. I know there are a few. and I watched some of them and I really couldn't figure out if this was something that I wanted or not. Um, I was a huge Robotech fan as a kid, and as I got older, realized that Macross was a thing. Um, so I've been a big fan of them both, and I've got some of the, um, you know, the uh, Yamato uh, Veritex or uh, the um, Variable Fighters, um, but I really haven't picked up any action figures. Uh, since the old Matchbox figures from the 80s, and I still have a whole bunch of those, and I think I even have a bunch on the card still somewhere. Um, but I was pretty excited to see that somebody else was putting out action figures and in the uh, bigger scale, so I was curious, but uh, like I said, I'd, I'd seen some things that kind of left a shadow of doubt in my mind as to whether or not these would be worth the money, so let's uh, let's see for ourselves. Uh, let me open this. I guess it's just a box with a you know, lid on top. Okay, yeah, it's a box, and then inside we've got the actual figure. Let's see how we can get this out without tearing up the box, the outer box, that is. Alright. Slides right out. Some plastic covering the window there. That's kind of nice. Nothing else in there. Uh, I'm going to put that back there and hopefully it'll stay out of the way. Um, very cool. Really like this art. And you see we've got uh, Macro Saga KC Collectible Action Figure Series Rick Hunter. That is for uh, Kit's Concept. KC. Both the Macross and Robotech logos. Uh, we get a picture of the figure on the back. Uh, some more, uh, some more of that classic uh, Macross and or Robotech um, art of one of the Vertex uh, or the Max. The uh, picture of the figure and his accessories. So it looks like. Probably get a couple different faces and some helmet options down there. Down here at the bottom, we've got a, uh, a list. Figure, hands, facial expressions, helmet, and display stand. And then over here, uh, same thing. Logos, name, and the uh, other part of that art, which I really like that a lot. And then, of course, we can see the figure in there. See some faces over there. Uh, let's get them out and see what's going on there. So, got some tape. Let me see if I can find my handy dandy knife. I can't, so we're just going to use ye old exacto and carefully slice the tape. And looks like we got our usual. Uh, tray style plastic packaging. I'm just going to pull that out. I can see there's, looks like there's something still in there. Instructions, maybe. Um, okay, they're taped. I thought for a second they were... Uh, Sealed. All right, let's see what the instructions say. All right, single sided, so that's kind of cool. It's kind of a comic style where he's talking to us. It's customer service, uh, some warnings, disclaimers. All right, so we can see how to change faces, how to put the stand together, 
change, looks like we have some alternates for the flight suit, and hands, very cool, so I'm going to put this aside, oh look, there's the Harmony Gold logo, which was basically what facilitated Macross becoming Robotech, oh and there it is too, it's, I didn't notice it before, down there, on the outer box, old Harmony Gold, is it on this one? I don't see it anywhere on this one. Oh, yep, there it is. Okay, well that's... I'd have been surprised if it wasn't there. Anyway, let's see what's we got, what we got in here. So, on the bottom we've got the display stand tray. Looks like a stand and uh, just an arm that'll plug into the back. So, since I've got this in my hands, I'm going to go ahead and get this out right now. You can see what it says there. Robotech, Macro Saga, Rick Hunter. Uh, plastic on this tray. They're very stiff. Uh, unlike uh, some of the other figures we've, we've got, or the other manufacturers, I guess. Different scales, etc., where it's a lot more malleable. This is uh, pretty stiff, it seems. All right, so we're going to lift the lid off. Oh, had a head come flying out. All right, I'll put that aside. So everything's covered in plastic. Everything's covered in plastic. And Rick himself is in a complete plastic sleeve, so just lift that right off. He's also got some more plastic around his backpack. Awesome. Not sure how to remove that. So I'm going to take the entire backpack off and the plastic falls right out. I'm going to put the, plastic, the uh, backpack aside for right now until we get all this sorted. Um, so this is tucked up between his, uh, at the joint between his abdomen and torso. And here we have another set, looks like between his hips and his abdomen. So I really prefer not to tear it. Um, but at the same time, don't really want to be pulling him apart. <laughs> Not all figures are really supposed to be pulled apart. Um, so, we're just going to go ahead and tear it off. It does, it comes right off. And we'll do the same for this. Almost well, looks like a diaper. This one's going to have to be uh, torn. Short of uh, completely disassembling him, popping uh, joints and stuff, I really don't see any obvious alternative to getting this plastic off. So that's the way we're going to handle it. And it eventually comes off. It is kind of a chore, but uh, I really didn't see any... Uh, any other way to do that. Oh, he's a really cool figure in hand. Um, I don't think the videos are doing him justice. Certainly none of the ones I saw. Um, he's a good size. Let's see if I can pan down a little bit here. Very good size. Uh, one of the things I had seen was uh, mostly w one of the big things that concerned me was some of the articulation. I'm pretty happy with that level, um, you know, keeping with the aesthetic of, uh, you know, not like a Marvel Legends style joint or something like that. But some of the more uh, uh, Asian figures have this style. Um, I don't really care for how it bubbles up like that, but... Um, I can certainly deal with it uh, to have better elbow range and to keep a, a more cleaner lines, I guess, on the figure. 
Um, the other thing was, was I guess with the uh, cockpit, uh, people were saying that there was no way that he was going to fit in the Kits Concept cockpit. And I don't know about that. I don't have the cockpit. I don't plan on buying the cockpit. Um, but, you know, that's a pretty good uh, thigh movement there. I mean... If he can't fit in that cockpit with this range of movement, um, then the problem is probably with the cockpit. That's that's not bad. Then again, like I said, I don't know. I don't own it. Um, I don't know that I will own it. And like I uh, said in the opening or earlier on, I, I've kind of slept on these or um, I really haven't, uh, I'd kind of decided I wasn't going to get them. I was really excited about them, really enthusiastic. And then, uh, like I said, I'd seen some things that made me think, well, that is not that worth worth that uh, the amount they're asking for a toy that doesn't articulate um, like it could or should for the scale. And that's not the case. I am very, very pleasantly surprised. And I will have to learn in the future not to trust uh, <laughs> all the videos you see on the internet. Big surprise. So let's get some of this stuff out. So you saw it comes with a backpack that's just got a little peg on the back. Pops right into his back. We had a head come out. Um, looks like just a plain closed mouth. We've got... Kind of an angry, uh, furrowed brow grimace type, gritted teeth maybe. Uh, this looks like surprise face. If I can pick it up. Whoa. A lot of expressions here. And we've got hair that I presume will stick out from the front of the helmet uh, when we put the helmet on. Here is the flight suit collar all uh, zipped up or buttoned up or however they do it uh, as opposed to that open collar type thing. So very cool. Oh, another face. I didn't notice. Squinting eyes. <laughs> that's interesting. Wow, so you get four faces plus the one that's on him. Uh, that's pretty great. Uh, looking at hands, looks like I had one come loose when I popped that thing. So, okay, let's sort these back out. At the top, we've got kind of some trigger finger hands, left and right. And these are obviously white and gloved to match the flight suit. Okay, I'm having some troubles here. All thumbs. That's the uh, other trigger finger. Moving down, we have, looks like, a pointing hand. Doesn't look like you could really hold anything, but maybe. And the right hand is just kind of a loose, uh, neutral uh poised hand. So right hand uh, moving down. Uh, looks like it could be for a throttle lever, something like that. You know, kind of like he's cupping over the top of it or something like that. That's what I think when I see that. Um, so maybe uh, designed it uh, with the uh, cockpit in mind. Uh, on the other side of that is another one I can't get my fingers in to get out. Is a saluting hand. Very cool. I like that a lot. Uh, you don't see that really at all. Uh, moving down, kind of another neutral pose hand for the left hand. So we kind of got, well, I guess that's really our only uh, left neutral. Got a trigger pointing, I guess, kind of the throttle type hand, and then a neutral hand. And same thing on the right. It's just kind of a neutral uh, 
relaxed grip. And then on him, he's got two fists. So moving across, we have this nifty little rifle, which I, I, don't, I don't remember this in the show. And that, that that's not saying anything. It's simply saying, I don't remember it. And it's probably been, um, I don't know, couldn't tell you how many years since I watched my DVDs. Um, I don't own any Blu-ray or anything else. Um, I know it's streaming on some services, but I, I haven't even watched it there. So it's been a very long time since I've watched the series. And uh, But very cool looking rifle. Very robotech-y. Put that plastic back. And we also have, I know it's out of screen, but the pistol, which is great. And uh, it reminds me a lot of the pistols that came with the little 3.75 uh, Matchbox figures. Of course, uh, a little more detailed now that we can scale up to six inches. But fantastic. I really, really like it. And last, certainly not least, we get the helmet accessory. Man, that's good looking. The paint, sharp, vibrant. I really like it. Um, of course, back in the 80s, that was one of the coolest things about the Matchbox figures was the... Um, and be very careful. The fact that uh, the pilots uh, included that was taped close. Um, excuse me. The pilots included little uh, rubber helmets you could slide on and off them. So you know anything that was removable back then was great. It was a bonus. So Uh, who was the one that didn't? Wasn't there one figure that didn't come with one? Maria? No, Maria had one. Oh, it was the later uh, reissues, um, I guess by Harmony Gold, didn't include the helmets, which was a huge disappointment. Anyway, here is this. I'm going to see if we can focus. Great looking paints. Very glossy, very shiny. Uh, there you have it. That is the uh, Kits Concept Macross slash Robotech Rick Hunter. There's a view with the face shield in place. Fantastic kit. If you're a fan, if you're even thinking about it, um, I'd say pick this figure up. I've loved Robotech. This is going to look great with my uh, Yamato uh Transformer, um, not the Transformer, but the uh, their their ships. They're I'm drawing a blank on it, but the, the BF fighters. Um, and if you want, check back again. Uh, see if I can put together a little video of us uh, swapping some of these parts out. And uh, I've also got a Lin Min May uh, figure video coming up, so stay tuned for that. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.